Welcome to Lesson 2D, Hydraulic Jack Analysis. In this lesson we describe how a hydraulic jack works, and then I analyze the hydraulic jack and do an example problem. First, some fundamental concepts. Let's consider a continuous fluid at rest. For example, a liquid exposed to atmospheric pressure at the surface. We'll let Z be up and the gravity vector be down, as is our usual convention. If two points one and two are on the same horizontal plane, in other words, at the same z location, then p1 is equal to p2. We make this general statement, p1 equal p2 if one and two are at the same elevation in a continuous fluid. It turns out that the shape of the container does not matter. For example, what if we had a container like this, with our liquid inside, each leg exposed to atmospheric pressure. Again, we define two points at the same elevation, one and two and p1 equal p2 here also. We meet the two criteria, one and two are at the same elevation, as we see here, and it's a continuous fluid from one to two. What that means is you can draw some kind of a curve from one to two through the same fluid. This leads us to a hydraulic jack, let's get clever here, where we make one of the legs much bigger than the other. Again, we add liquid to the container. This time, let's let one and two be just below the surface. By the way, if both of these sides are exposed to atmospheric pressure in either of these cases, the liquid will rise to the same level in each leg. But now instead of being exposed to atmospheric pressure, let's add pistons at the surfaces of each leg. Let piston 1 have surface A1, and let piston 2 have surface A2. This is the surface area exposed to the liquid, or in contact with the liquid. Now we apply some force F1 on the left leg, and some other force F2 on the right leg. These two forces are not necessarily equal. In fact, they won't be equal, and that's the whole purpose of a hydraulic jack. Just as in the above two cases, P1 is equal to P2 at these two locations, since they're at the same elevation through a continuous fluid. Here's a quick analysis. Force F1 has to equal P1A1. Note that we're ignoring the weight of the pistons. Another way to think about it is that this force is the force you're applying plus the weight of the piston, and this is true on either side. On the other side, F2 is equal to P2A2, but since P1 and P2 are equal, this equation becomes F2 over F1 equal A2 over A1. Keep in mind that this is for the case where the two pistons are at the same elevation as in our drawing. Hopefully you can see the application, namely, since A2 is greater than A1, as in this diagram, F2 is greater than F1 because of these ratios. So by applying a small force here, you can support a large force here. And that's the concept of a hydraulic jack. Now let's discuss the hydraulic jack's purpose and analysis. The purpose of a hydraulic jack is to lift a heavy object, for example a car, using a small force. Here's a little hydraulic jack. I have one of these in my garage. Here's a larger one that you might see in a mechanics shop. The small force is provided here on the right side, whereas the large force, which we called F2, is on the left side in this diagram. As you push the handle down, you push some distance, say delta Z1. On the other side, the lifting side, delta Z2 is much smaller. So in our equation, since A2 is much bigger than A1, F2 is much bigger than F1. But delta Z1 required is much bigger than delta Z2 that you get out. Thus, a hydraulic jack provides a mechanical advantage, also called force amplification. And it's similar to simpler devices such as levers, gear trains, chain drives, block and tackle. A hydraulic jack works because of the laws of hydrostatics and uses a fluid, typically some kind of oil. Let me comment here that for hydraulics we use a liquid. We have an analogous application called pneumatics, which uses a gas instead of a liquid. That gas is compressible like air, so the equations get a little more complicated, whereas in hydraulics we're approximating the fluid as incompressible. So here's a sketch of a simple hydraulic jack, and we have our locations 1 and 2, just under the pistons. Again, you can draw a continuous curve from 1 to 2, so we know this is the same fluid. This is typically some kind of oil, which we call a hydraulic oil, which we approximate as incompressible. So here, P1 equal P2, just as in our previous case. And so F2 over F1 is equal to A2 over A1, and we call this the mechanical advantage. If A2 is sufficiently larger than A1, you can actually lift up a car with your pinky finger because of this mechanical advantage. 
but you'd have to push down a very large distance in order to get this car to move up a little bit. That's why we typically have a pump in here where you're constantly going up and down, pumping that liquid in and moving the piston up. Let's do an example. In this case, we're allowing for the pistons to be at different elevations. The hydraulic jack uses an oil with some specific gravity to lift an object of a given mass. The piston areas A1 and A2 are given, and this elevation between the two pistons is 1.65 meters. I'll call that elevation difference H. By the way, it's always wise to work in variables as far as possible before plugging in any numbers. Let's call this location 1 and this location 2. If we go straight across at the same elevation, that can be relative to some arbitrary reference frame. Let's call this location 1 prime. Since we can draw a continuous curve from 1 to 1 prime through the same fluid, and since they are both at the same elevation, we know that P1 has to equal P1 prime. Now we apply our equation of hydrostatics. P below equal P above plus rho g absolute value of delta z. Applying this between 1 prime and 2, P1 prime equal P1, which is equal to P2 plus rho g h, the height difference between 1 prime and 2, or 1 and 2. Weight w is equal to P2 times a2, the area of this piston on the right side. Therefore, P2 is w over a2, and the force f on the right side is equal to P1a1, which from here is equal to P2 plus rho g h times a1. We plug in this for P2 and solve for F. We get F equal W over A2 plus rho g h times A1. Finally, since W equal mg, mass times gravitational constant, the final expression for our force is m over A2 plus rho h quantity times g times A1. This is our answer in variable form. As I've stated previously, always stay in variable form as far as possible before plugging in any numbers. Now we're ready to plug in numbers. F is equal to the quantity mass over A2. I'll put in a unit conversion. One meter is 100 centimeters, and we have to square that. Plus rho, since we're given specific gravity, I'll write rho as specific gravity times rho of water, or 0 0.765 times 1,000 kilogram per meter cubed. And then H here is given as 1.65 meters, close bracket g, 9.807 meter per second squared, and a1, 0.562 centimeters squared. We need a couple more unity conversion factors. Again, a meter is 100 centimeters, and we square that. A newton is a kilogram meter per second squared. And when we plug all this into our calculator, we get 20.464 newtons, verifying that all the units cancel out properly. Centimeters, kilograms, these two meters, meters squared here, meters squared, and meters squared there, second squared, leaving us with newtons. Finally, to three significant digits, my numerical answer is 20.5 newtons. And that's how we solve for this general case of a hydraulic jack. As I said previously, either we ignore the weights of the pistons, or we add the weight of the piston to this weight, and the weight of this piston to this force. That's the more accurate way to do it. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos.